to the May 2020 webinar we have. The topic we're going to be discussing today is creating allies in the workplace. Um, our webinar is being sponsored by the by the National Stuttering Association, also known as the NSA, and um, it's a part of our project, the We Stutter at Work project. <laughs> So we're gonna go ahead and get into introductions. Um, I'll go first since I'm already speaking. Uh, my name is Carl Coffey. It's really good to see all of you guys and have you all join us today. <clears throat> I'm, I'm calling from, 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 from Bowling Green, Kentucky, um, as you can probably see by my Western Kentucky University shirt. Um, I enjoy going to the gym. Um, actually, when, 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 Harold and I were talking a few nights ago. We actually uh, uh, we found out that we actually go to the same gym, just in in two different cities, which was kind of neat. Um, for work, I'm a I'm a consultant for United Health Group, and the big focus of my role is on uh, process is on process modeling and process improvement. So I work with our business partners to understand their processes and work with them to understand areas where there may be process inefficiencies and looking to see if we can help them improve their processes. Um, let's see a little bit more about me. So I'm involved in the, in the, the NSA, which is a National Stuttering Association. Um, I'm on the Employment Advocacy Committee with Ariel and with a few other folks um, that I've seen who are on the call today. Uh, Pam and John were the two names that I saw in the chat uh, in the chat box. Um, I'm also a, a, a chapter leader of the local Bowling Green chapter um, and also serve as a, um, as, a, as, a, as a board member for the board of um, the board of board of directors for the um, the NSA as well. Awesome, Carl. So thank you. Um, my name is Ariel Malman. I am 24 years old. Um, I'm obviously a person who stutters. I am a marketing coordinator for a cybersecurity company, and I'm calling in from Maryland, so we're still in lockdown over here. Um, for hobbies, I like to exercise, especially run, which I've been doing a lot of during this quarantine period. Um, I like to watch TV. I'm watching Ozark right now on Netflix, and it's really, really good. And on the side, I like to blog. Um, I like to share stories and help raise awareness for stuttering so we can help change some of those negative stereotypes that surround it. And as Carl said, I just, I, I have been involved with the NSA for um, a couple of years. I've attended their annual conferences in the past, which are so much fun. And I recently joined the Employment Advocacy Committee. So this is my first webinar here, and I'm really excited to be here. Awesome. So as Carl mentioned, the National Stuttering Association, also referred to as the NSA for short, is a nonprofit, and we help bring hope and empowerment to adults and children who stutter their families and professionals through support, education, advocacy, and research. If you are interested in becoming involved with the NSA, or if you just want to learn about what, you know, what else they do, you can visit westutter.org. So, so, also as we oh. mentioned, oh, <laughs> sorry, Ariel. Go ahead. Um, so, as we mentioned before as well, um, this this webinar is a part of the We Stutter at Work program that's put on by the by the National Stuttering Association, um, and our and our aim is to 
really do anything we can to help people who stutter uh, uh, um, to achieve achieve career success. Um, we have a lot of resources that are available on our on our on our website that's at the link below, which is we stutter.org forward slash career success. Um, one of my favorite resources that we have available is our mock our mock online job interview program. Um, so our um, so our so our committee is made up of people who stutter um, and we understand what it's like to go through the job application and 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 interview process and so we really want to do all that we can to help folks who are also going through that process um, so if you go to that website down below you'll find um, a link for you to submit a request to do a mock job interview with us so if you have a job interview that's 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 coming up and you want to get practice uh, specifically for that or if you just want to work on Im improving your skills overall then that's a great um, resource to take ed ed advantage of there um, we also have our webinars which you know about now because you're here um, we also have career profiles um, of 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 that are made up of made up of people who stutter um, you know so there are a few different folks who are involved in the in the in the in the NSA who have who have who have who have, who have chosen to put in their career profiles and so you can you know so you can find out information about what they do for work how they navigate their career as a as a person who stutters and more information as well um, we also have information about our 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 one day conferences and also and also information for you to share with em employers as well um, so anyone who knows me knows that I love a good meme um, and so I decided to create one for our for our for our webinar today you know just to ensure that we all have the best experience that we can have um, and we just ask that you know as we're you know as we're as we're presenting as Pam had mentioned earlier you know if you're not speaking and as you join if you would please place yourself on mute um, there's going to be some some op some opportunities to 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 interact throughout the webinar that we're very excited about um, and so we ask that you please use the we ask that you please use the chat feature for um, for those times also if you have any questions or just have a um, or have a or have a a comment throughout the what webinar we ask that you use the chat feature as well um, I also want to uh, take a moment and thank Pam Mertz who is who is who is who is also a who is also a board member for the National Stuttering Association who is um, you know who is um, who is who is monitoring our chat today um, so we want to thank Pam for all of her hard work and everything she does for us and also wanted to remind you that if you pre registered for this for this webinar that you're going to be informed um, when the when the recording is available online so without further ado we'll go ahead and jump right in thank you Carl so to start I just wanted to share some really simple pretty obvious but still worth mentioning ways to be successful at work and that includes building relationships checking in with yourself and creating allies so building relationships is something that we all really need to do it's important to do this because then you have a more positive har harmonious work environment and if you have a happier work environment you're going to be more 
productive, which is great. Um, so we're going to get into ways that you can build relationships, which involves going out of your comfort zone on the next slide. It's also important to just check in with yourself. I think all of us have moments on the job where we, we doubt ourselves or if we question our competence, and that's okay. It's just important to remember that you were hired here, you've got the job, you've convinced other people you can do it, so you just need to remind yourself. Lastly, you can take those relationships that you built and take them one step further and turn them into allies. And again, we're going to go into more detail on that later on. So if you want to move on to the next slide, Carl. Mm -hmm. A couple of ways you can get more comfortable at work. So I mentioned building relationships and checking in with yourself. Networking is one obvious way that you can get to know your colleagues better while still maintaining that professional boundary. There are some people who don't necessarily want to get personal with their colleagues and that's totally okay. But if you spend time getting to know them and their projects and what they're responsible for, the ins and outs of the company as a whole and, and you know everything else, you are presenting yourself as a friendly, approachable and passionate employee. Even if you're not that passionate about the job, it's important to show your enthusiasm. And um, if you network a lot, you'll become more comfortable, especially if, if you're working at a large organization. It can be a bit um, overwhelming to work with so many people in a company that does so many different um, operations. Another thing is you never know when you might, you know, need a, a recommendation for your next job or something. Um, it's also important to create social interactions. And what I mean by that is take charge and create something yourself. It's one thing to participate in activities, but if you take charge and you facilitate a group lunch or a group happy hour or a committee or something that shows that you are a leader engaging and that you are really inclusive one example at my current job um my colleagues and i a couple of them um i learned our big true crime fanatics like myself so we created this um what we call a cold case committee where we meet once a week for lunch and we just talk about true crime stuff. It sounds a little bit odd, but it's so nice to talk to your colleagues about stuff that's not work, but it's also not too personal where if you feel like you're you're crossing that professional boundary. And Carl can go into more information on disclosing and how you can take advantage of opportunities that interest you. Awesome. Thanks, Ariel. So we're going to spend a little bit of time um, a little bit later in the presentation going really in depth into what into what disclosing is. Um, but just to give a high level overview of it, um, disclosing or or also advertising as some folks may call it as well is 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 essentially when you advertise or let other people know that you are a a person who stutters um you know you may choose to do this just because you know you want to get it you want to get it out there you know and you may just want to take that pressure or that burden off of yourself you know because you may not want to you know pretend to be a person who's fluent all the time because you know from my experience that can be exhausting um you know so you may choose to go this route um, you know, it's, it's, it's also important at work as, as, as Ariel had mentioned to, you know, really, uh, dive in and, you know, take advantage of things that may, that may, that may interest you at work, you know, whether it's creating, 
a space for you and other coworkers, you know, to um, to talk about a podcast and kind of share uh, different theories about it, you know, or if you decide that you want to take advantage of a volunteer opportunity at work, you know, we we really shouldn't let our stuttering stand in the place of us, you know, going after and pursuing things, you know, that um, that are that are important and and also of interest to us as well. So on the next slide, um, we actually have a question for you and we ask that you, you know, use the, use the chat box to type in your responses. Um, and the question is, do your coworkers know that you stutter? If no, why not? Um, and so while you're thinking and while you're typing, I'm gonna share with you guys an experience that I had um, where I came out and let my coworkers know that I was a person who stutters. Uh, so at my, at my previous job, when I was going through the job, um, when I was going through the, the interview process, um, I had a, I had a, I had a half day interview and, you know, it was a type of deal where, you know, I had to go from uh, meeting to meeting to, to introduce myself and, you know, meet with different people who I would be, who I'd be working with in that role um, on um, on the team. And so uh, during the during the interview process, one of the things that I had to do was actually meet with a panel of people. I think there were eight people in the room. And so it was eight folks on on um, eight folks on one side of the table and then me. Um, and of course I was really stressed out. I was really nervous. I had wanted to do a good job and wanted to present the best the best version of myself that I could. Um, and so I stuttered. Um, I stuttered a lot during this, you know, during this interview. And it got to the point where I really thought to myself, you know, I don't want them to think that I'm, that I'm, you know, that I'm stuttering because I'm really nervous, even though I was, or that, you know, I'm being un, um, that I'm being un, being un, untruthful or if I have something that I want to hide. And so I, and so I really decided to just disclose there. Um, and so I let them know that I was a person who stutters. And so that's why, you know, they heard me speaking this way. Um, and I let them know that even though I'm a person who stutters, you know, I still have done a lot of great things at work and I have made a lot of positive contributions. And that really allowed me to take the pressure off myself and it also helped those folks uh be able to focus more on what i was saying as opposed to how i was how i was saying it um so that went really well for me um i didn't know how it was going to be perceived at the time but i but i but i but i actually got the job you know and so that was something that was very exciting for me and i went into the job you know with my coworkers knowing that I was a person who stutters. Awesome. So I just wanted to look at some of the responses in the chat box before I jump into what is disclosure. Um, there's a couple people I recognize, which is really fun. Mm -hmm. um, Jesse, hello. Emily, um, let's see. They don't know that I stutter. I'm worried it will affect their perception of my intelligence and other abilities. I completely relate to that. There are some people that I'm still hesitant to tell that I stutter or at least like show my stuttering to them because I don't want them to think that I'm incompetent or that I'm nervous to speak up. So I definitely relate to that. And to the person who said they know most of the time, sometimes I hide when I meet people the first time. I, I do that as well. Um, it takes me some time to get more comfortable with people. And then I'm happy to advertise and, you know, talk their ears off about stuttering. So these are really great responses. Um, thank you guys for sharing them. 
So to get more into disclosure, as Carl said, it's just the process of telling someone that you stutter. We also may call it advertising at times too. So there's a couple benefits to disclosing. One of them is to help alleviate time pressure. I know for me personally, if I'm talking to someone and they talk super fast, I feel pressure to keep up with the pace of their conversation and it's really hard and then it makes me struggle a lot more and not enjoy it because I'm just so worried that I'm holding up the whole conversation because of my stutter. But if I tell someone I stutter, I don't feel the need to keep up with their pace and it lets them know that I don't need you to finish my sentences or cut me off. I just need a little bit more time. Another reason is it helps you focus on the content of what you're saying versus how you're saying it. Um, sometimes I have gotten caught up in talking and I've been more worried about how I sound instead of what I'm actually saying. And then what I'm actually saying starts to not make sense at all. So if you just tell someone you stutter, that allows yourself to not feel pressure to sound perfect and you can say everything that you want to say. Another reason is it shows that you're being vulnerable and exchanging stories or topics of vulnerability helps you connect with people, which allows you to then build a stronger relationship with them, which you can then turn into an ally. And lastly, and I think one of the most important reasons is telling someone you are a person who stutters helps defy those stereotypes about stuttering. There's a lot of people who think people who stutter are nervous and timid and not confident communicators. And I think by telling someone that you stutter, you're letting them know that you are a confident communicator and you don't need assistance in any way and then the listener will understand not to cut you off and um, you know respond in a rude way so those are all great benefits to disclosing but in terms of like what you can actually say to disclose that's another story so Carl's going to get more into that on the next slide yeah so um, you know here I want to talk to you all about you know, when and how you might disclose, and if you do decide to do that, what it might look or sound like. You know, so as so as Ariel mentioned on the previous slide, making the decision to disclose or advertise that you're a person who stutters is a very personal one, and it can be really tough. Um, so for so for myself, um, for a long time, I was what you would call a I was what you would call a covert stutterer. And so what that means essentially is I would do everything in my power to not stutter. And so that may have meant uh, changing around what I was going to say, which as Ariel also mentioned, sometimes would lead me to just speaking in, in circles and saying things that maybe didn't make a whole lot of sense or it didn't go along with what the thought in my head was, but I said something that may have been easier for me to say in the moment. Um, or I would just, or I would just do my best to try and try and avoid particular people or situations in which I thought I might stutter. Um, you know, so really making the decision to disclose, you know, it's really a personal one and there's not really a one size fits all type of approach. You know, what works for one person may not work for the other and vice versa. Um, but if you do decide that you want to disclose, you know, it's really important to think about, you know, what it will look like and how and when you'll do it. Um, so a few scenarios where you might decide to disclose could be um, in a in a one-on-one -on -one type setting. So at my job, we have uh, weekly meetings with our managers, which we call one-on-ones. And it is basically a time for you to meet with your manager to give them an, an overview on what you've been 
working on in terms of your projects, any type of of obstacles you may have been running into, you know, or if you just want to pick their brain on things. Um, I actually made the I actually made the the decision to disclose to my previous boss um, in in one of these meetings. Um, so, um, you know, I felt like when I was on calls, you know, I was really having a hard time connecting with people and I didn't want them to think, you know, that I didn't know what what I was doing. And so I wanted to, you know, come out to my boss and just let her know that I was a person who stutters. I didn't do that when I first joined the team, you know, and I think it was probably two or three months into the role until I finally worked up the courage, you know. So as I was, so as I was, as I was telling you guys in a previous, you know, um, slide for an, for an, for an old role that I was in, you know, I actually disclosed during the, during the during the during the interview process but in this role you know i didn't decide to you know to i didn't decide to take that approach you know so for me you know in one particular situation i chose to do it one way and in another i i chose a completely different approach you know so it, it may vary even when doing it yourself um you may you may decide that you want to do it during a team meeting. So I actually had a friend who um, who decided last week for National Stuttering, Stuttering Awareness Week that she was going to talk to her team about stuttering. And so she actually made a presentation, you know, where she talked about stuttering during a team meeting. She invited her teammates to ask her to ask her questions about stuttering and she and she and she she really did her best to try and you know to try and make it as you know to make it as informative and as interactive as as possible you may also decide that you want to do this during a um you know during a during a a presentation if you have to to give one. So for example, how this might look, you might, you know, start off, uh, you might start off a presentation by saying, you know, hi, my name is Carl, and I'm a person who stutters. So it may take me a little bit longer to, to get out what I want to say, but I appreciate your patience. You know, you, you may decide you want to take that approach, um, you know, so it really will vary. Um, you may also decide that you want to do it spontaneously, you know, during, uh, during conversation when you're speaking to someone. Um, you know, so there's a lot of different approaches that you might take. And so, you know, how and when you might decide to disclose could look, um, you know, very, very, very different. Okay, not muted anymore. So I have another chat box question. It's how would you define an ally? So I kind of talked about how building relationships is necessary to have a good harmonious work environment. And so now you can take those relationships and you can go a step further and create allies out of them. So while you guys are all typing away, um, I wanted to kind of piggyback off of what Carl said about the importance and examples of ways you can disclose. Um, I typically like to tell people that I stutter spontaneously during conversations. I just kind of come up with it if it's relevant to what we're talking about. Um, like if we're talking about a project or a time that like we got really nervous about something or about what my vacation plans are, I might say, oh, I'm going to the National Stuttering Association Conference. I'm a person who stutters and I go and show my support. Um, and so it's important to disclose and create allies because it helps them kind of understand your perspective of stuttering. Um, I know of several people who have told me that because of me and, and what I've, you know, told them about my stutter, 
they have responded so much more positively to other people that they've met who stuttered. And, you know, they have said stuff like, because of you and what you've told me about stuttering, I didn't try to um, fill in the words for, you know, my landscaper who stuttered, or I don't make, you know, comments about not understanding what they're saying. So um, I define an ally as someone that I can trust and someone that I feel supported by. And some of you guys define allies as someone who understands your strengths, your weaknesses, abilities, talents, and personalities. They will stand up for you in times of distress, which is a really good answer. Mm -hmm. Bobby, hey Bobby, um, he said, someone who will support you in your future endeavors. Perfect. Someone who is supportive of you, who hasn't had the same lived experiences. They might not be someone who, who stutters. Mm -hmm. This is important because you can create allies from your colleagues who don't stutter. Um, there are not a huge, crazy amount of people in the world who stutter. So the chances are you're going to have to create allies out of people who don't stutter. Um, someone who has my back if I'm cut off or talked over, someone who will say something to bring me back into the conversation. That's really important too. Um, these are great responses. I'm so glad that you guys are answering these. Um, someone asked if I could repeat my definition of an ally. Absolutely. So I just, I, I define an ally as a person that I can trust and that I feel supported by. And it's important to remember that it's a two-way street. So Carl's gonna go into more detail about allies on the next slide. Awesome. Is that so yeah. here we're gonna talk about how, we, how can we create allies at work, um, you know, and I think it's important for us to remember, we spend so much of our time at work. Um, you know, if, if you're at work for, for eight hours a day and i know for for some of us we may be working virtually now and so we may because of that be putting in a little bit more hours um you know it's really important for us to put some put some f effort into connecting with other people you know this has been a process for me um as well um, I have an example for where I had to really work at this. Um, at, at, at my old job, um, I worked in an open office environment with 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 cubicles, and so you know we all you know were sitting out you know at our our desk, and you know people would be talking about you know what what shows they were watching on TV, you know different work projects that they were working on, things like that. Um, and when I would come into work uh, into the office, uh, uh, most times the first thing I would do was put in, was put in, was put in my, was put in my headphones when I walked in the door. You know, I, um, you know, and I'm pretty sure my coworkers probably thought, wow, Carl is such a serious guy. He really is a hard worker. He gets to work, you know, and he just kind of uh, goes for it. And I would like to think that was a little bit true, but it was, but it was also because I was really nervous about people hearing me stutter at work. You know, I feel like I've gotten to a place where I accept my stuttering, but it still feels a little bit, it still feels a little bit awkward when you feel like, you know, you're put on the spot because you're a little bit different, you know, or people may have to wait to hear what you have to say. Um, and so it really took me a little bit of time in terms of being, in terms of being deliberate and taking off my headphones and being able to contribute to the conversations at work and, and, and really being okay with doing that. Um, as we've, as we've, as we've mentioned before, you know, it's important as well to be open to sharing s some of your, uh, some of your hobbies and activities and interests that you have outside of work you know 
even though we all spend a lot of time at work, we also, you know, look forward to spending time away from work as well, you know, and so it's really important for us to work on building those, building those relationships with our, with our, with our coworkers by letting them know what are some things that we enjoy doing, you know, and, and, you know, really being able to share parts of our lives as well. You know, this is really how we go about forging strong, forging strong relationships and also creating, also creating allies at work as well. Um, and the last point I think is really important um, is just to be a good listener and also being, and also being, being helpful as well. You know, I think listening is such an important skill that for me as a person who stutters, I'd like to think that I've gotten pretty good at over the years. Um, you know, but it's really important, you know, to, as much as we share with people, you know, to really work on reciprocating that. And as, and as Ariel said, the process of creating, of creating, uh, of creating allies is a two-way street you know as as much as we want to be accepted by others that's also what other what other people want from us and expect from us as well um you know so i think it's really important for us to when we're speaking with people you know um, and w when we're talking to really focus on giving our full attention to others and being present as well Well said. So we kind of threw a lot of information at you guys, and I just wanted to recap with some of the more um, important takeaways. So we want you guys to all feel confident about bringing your full self to work, and that includes your stutter. If you are still more shy and more covert about your stuttering, that's okay. You can take steps to feel more comfortable at work by doing things like networking, um, creating social interactions and taking advantage of opportunities that interest you. And if you want to, disclose your stutter. And all of this is important because when you feel happier and more comfortable at work, it's gonna be easier to build relationships with people. And that leads me to the next key takeaway is having a strategy for identifying and building allies. And I think the important thing to differentiate is when you build a positive relationship with someone, you can then take it a step further and turn them into an ally. So for example, I love to talk to my colleagues and I have great positive relationships with all of my colleagues and I have a smaller pool of people that I call allies because I feel more comfortable talking about my stuttering to them or showing my stuttering to them and they have showed an interest in it as well. And Carl, you want to take the next two bullets? I will. Um, so as we mentioned about, you know, disclosing, that process may look may look different between two people and you know it it may look different you know in terms of if you decide to do it yourself what you may find works on one day or something you may do with one person you may decide to take a a a different approach approach with with someone else or another group of people you know um and it it, it can be something that's that's a little bit awkward and, and uncomfortable to do at first, you know, but just with a lot of things in life, the more that you pr practice at it and the more that you're deliberate with it, you know, it will get easier with time. Um, as we also have, have, have mentioned, you know, for re relationship building is a two way street, you know, so as, um, so as, as much as we expect to get from other people, we all, we also should be willing to give that as well and we do that by uh building by building relationships and also and also by by taking a 
they're taking a genuine interest in other folks as well. Mm. So we've so, come to the end. <laughs> there's an echo in the background. I'm not sure if you can hear it, Carl. Um, I can. Is it coming from my end at all? No, I, I think maybe some folks have uh, taken themselves off of mute, which is great because we're okay. looking to start our our Q and A portion. And I know that we've had some some things that have come through the, the chat box because I've seen the notifications come through, but I haven't been able to see them because I've been presenting. So I'm going to stop sharing. Um, and I can also see everyone else's faces as well, which I haven't been able to see. So it's great to see the faces of some folks who are here. Um, and also to get started with our Q&A portion as well. Yeah, so um, I wanted to start off with answering one question I received from one of my peers a while back, and that was, how can you present yourself as an ally to someone else? And I thought that that was a really important question because this whole presentation talked about how we can find allies for ourselves, but as Carl just said, it's a two-way street. Like you have to return being an ally to someone else. So if you know someone who stutters, or even if it's not a stutter, if you know someone that you think could use an ally, present yourselves as an ally to them by engaging in conversation with them, networking with them, going to lunch or after work happy hours or Zoom calls, I guess, with them now. Um, but if you just take time to get to know someone and be vulnerable with them and show an interest in their lives, they will look at you as a person that they can trust and that they feel supported by. And then hopefully um, you guys will be able to have allies out of each other, which is a great, great feeling. So thank you to the person that submitted that question. And if you guys have any other questions, please put them in the chat box and we can all um, I'll discuss them. I was looking at it um, throughout the presentation and there were some really, really great responses in here. So, so keep them coming. Can I verb, I verb I yeah, I'd like to verbally ask a question. question. Mm -hmm. um, do you two find is there a difference between build build building and identifying al, al, allies at work if you're physically in contact with people versus virtually like is there a difference mm -hmm. or don't you see 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 that as as much um i think i know carl can probably speak to this because he works remote full time even before the pandemic but for me I was working in an office and then we got to be remote. So um, I think it was easier to have those like organic, spontaneous conversations in the office as you're, you know, walking by someone else's desk or you could both go out to lunch together. Um, I think it's been a bit harder virtually because you don't have access to people as much. But what I have done a few times is just called my colleagues and just talked to them and just been like, how's your day going? You know, what are you working on? Like, what else have you been up to during this quarantine period? And so it's not as natural as just walking up to someone at their desk or striking up a conversation in the break room. But if you take that extra step to call them or even text them or message them, I think it means a lot to the person and it's helpful for you as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd, I'd say from my experience, um, you know, in, um, in my previous role, I worked in and worked in and worked in an in, in office environment. And I feel like now that I'm working remotely I find that I have to be a lot more deliberate about connecting with people um, but I think that ever since we've been quarantined and 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 um, and a lot more folks on my team have 
um, have moved to working virtually as well. You know, it's really brought up the opportunity for us to make small talk before we have our calls, you know, so we will talk about, you know, what um, we'll talk about what we've been doing over the, what we've been doing over the weekends or any new shows that we've been binging. I think at our previous team call, we all had to go and share what was our new quarantine act, um, what was our newest quarantine act activity that we had started since, you know, since things began, since quarantine began. So, you know, I think it is a little bit, I think it is a little bit harder for me, you know, and so I really had to dig a little bit, a little bit deeper to, to form those connections and the bond with people. Yeah, well said. It's all about intention and just pushing yourself to take that extra step to talk to people and get to know people. Um, mm -hmm. Passing thrice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, this chat box is great. I've been reading it. all of these. And if you guys have questions for each other, or if you want to unmute yourself and then, you know, ask a question, even if you're hesitant to, you know, speak up. Um, I'm trying to think if I have any more questions for the audience. What has everyone's like, have you guys ever had an experience where you thought you had an ally and then it turned out they maybe weren't the best ally? And if so, how did you guys handle it? So that's my question. Mm -hmm. Question. Well, we're typing. Um, Lawrence Conifal, what is one action each of you will take as a result of what you learned today? Mm. Yeah. Good question. I need some time to think about that. So if you want to start, <laughs> Carl, <laughs> that would be great. Sure. Um, one action that I'll take as a result of what I learned today. Um, you know, I think I'll do my best to remind myself, which takes a lot of reminding that, um, you know, as much as I think about stuttering and as much as I focus on it, other people are not going to be paying as much attention to it as I am, you know, and I think for me, sometimes I'm maybe a little bit more hesitant to share, especially if I'm like uh, meeting someone new, like I, it's a little bit hard to just let people know immediately, like, hey, I stutter, um, because it, it is a very personal thing to share. And it, it also does make you feel very vulnerable. But I think in the grand scheme of things, like most people don't care, you know, and they want to know if you're a good person or not. Um, and so I think for me, it always is a good reminder to just say, hey, uh, no one is going to be thinking about this as much as I am. And so just to kind of let my guard down and just be and just be myself and be okay with that. Also, great that it was uh, directed at the at, at the participants i love to see people <laughs> talking yeah you guys so you guys can it. all answer these two um an action i will be taking um i might write a new blog post about my webinar <laughs> and just reminding people that it's important to build relationships even during this awkward quarantine period mm -hmm. Oh, it looks like we did get a response. Uh, someone said, one action I will take because of what I learned today is to be more open about my stuttering to my colleagues and students. And they share that they are a teacher, which I think is really, really neat. Yeah, I think if you're a teacher, you have the opportunity to set so many great examples for your students. And I think they will find it really inspiring that you are taking charge and being confident about something that's maybe harder to be confident about so props to you andrea and ariel you asked the question what if you find 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 out that a person you thought was an ally, ally is is not really an ally mm -hmm. um i i I would just share that like years ago in my younger, less mature self, I probably would have gotten like angry 
and cut that person off because I felt like they were backstabbing or, you know, whatever. Um, and I would have, you know, reacted out of, you know, the feeling like, what are you doing? I thought we were friends. I thought you were a support, support, supporter. But now as I've gotten old, old, older and have had the opportunity to see so many workplace relationships, I just, you know, keep in mind that um, somebody else's problem of not wanting to be supportive or being an ally doesn't have to be my problem. Um, and I think that's just something that I've learned over, over the years because um, I would take things personally, you know, and now, now I've learned that, you know, that's too much of an expenditure of time worrying or being mad at some, some, somebody else. So I focus on what's, what's, what's more important. That's great, Pam. Um, I see two other answers that kind of go in line with what you were saying. Um, Jesse said, yes, I have had poor allies. There's not much you can do in the moment, but after the moment passed, I let them know that the what that they could take better action going forward i think that's a great mature response and as pam said like sometimes people do have poor responses and that sucks like zach said a he's a high school varsity assistant coach and thought the whole coaching staff were allies one of them made fun of his setter not cool it's hard not to take things personally, but you just have to kind of remember that people don't know a lot about stuttering and they don't know that it can really affect you like that. So if you just take the time to maybe gently correct them and just point out, you know, that that response wasn't okay, I think it'll be, um, you'll have a more positive relationship with them going forward. I like Emily Anderson's response too. I don't know, Ariel, if you've seen seen it. I'm reading it now. Yeah. <laughs> I've been working with someone for a while and I thought by now he was triggered. Once we talked about it, he said he thought I had Tourette's and actually told people I had Tourette's. <laughs> I hurt my feelings that he would have seen something and correct me tell other people instead of getting upset. I reminded him to just ask me next time. Yeah, that is great. Like, just tell the person like, like what you're saying about me isn't true. You can just come to me and talk and just kind of approach them like, not so much accusatory as being mean, even if they were, but if you can just kind of remind them like, we can just talk about this like to adults, and that's okay. It kind of reminds me, um, I believe I shared this at one point. One time I had somebody introduce deuce, deuce me to a group that I was going to be speaking at. Um, this is Pamela Mert. She's a stutterer. And I'm like, oh my God. Like, I just felt Excuse like, me? He, I know, I just felt like he had no, he didn't have the right to do that, to out me. You know, yeah. if I was going, if I had wanted that, I would have disclosed and I was, I, I, I worried that his disclaimer clouded pe people, people's impression of me and what they thought they would hear in my presentation. And um, allies don't do that. <laughs> allies, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, respect your, your personhood and, 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 you know, respect the thought that if you're going to, you know, share something personal about yourself, you'd rather do it yourself. Has anybody else ever had that kind of an experience? If I may, um, I like to uh, comment on that, uh, Pam. Um, I think uh, that's a part of the um, ignorance out there of uh, stuttering, and um, you know, just I think a big uh, part of this is um, uh, spreading awareness like we are uh, through this uh, webinar and educating people and just being in uh, more of an 
an advocate for stuttering. And I know that's not uh, easy to uh, do either. Um, I'm starting to do that now myself and to, uh, to build up that courage and really uh, um, become an advocate more. You know, that's, um, it's, um, it's not easy. Uh, and, you know, all um, of us had a lot of experiences that knock uh, us down, but it's about time that we started to lift ourselves up and, uh, you know, really educate about what it is and, um, you know, to help others not um, have those t type of um, incidents happen at work or, or in um, any of our interactions. So, um, and uh, really quick, I'd just like to thank uh, Carl and Ariel for, uh, you know, this whole webinar because it's been helpful. So thank you very much. I know we're running short on time, but Chase ha ha raised his hand. So I wanted to be sure you guys acknowledged um, him. Yes. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that, guys. Um, I'm Chase. I, I, I just learned that that feature of raising your hands. That's, that's a pretty <laughs> cool feature. Um, but so I, had a couple, I, had a, I guess I had a question, um, but I've been a part of the NSA for multiple years. I attended the conference and I DJ the, the NSA conference and my, my DJ name is DJ Stutter, which is a great, a great way to disclose. Um, I love that. But one great. The, yeah, thanks. But one, so one of the um, questions I had, so uh, I am in Nashville, Tennessee, and I moved up here. Uh, about a year and a half ago, and one of the things that a I started a new job, um, being in the music in industry as a booking agent. Um, as you start a new job and you are going through the the normal curve of learning your um, your your coworkers and you are developing those relationships with people. How do you guys work through the mind reading of not knowing of not knowing your coworkers and and being and being able to differentiate between them just not understanding stuttering and that might cause them to react differently or or give you that that odd face you know that people don't uh, understand as we mm -hmm. all know um but how do you guys i guess work through that period of time where you are learning your your job and your daily skills and also trying to build relationships with your coworkers and overcoming that overcoming that mind reading aspect of meeting new people that you are going to work with on a daily basis that's a great question um i might have some um i think i can connect to that in a sense i started a new job um, in november so it was a hard transition because it was also around the holiday time um and i had previously known some people at that job so some people knew that i stuttered and other people did not so it was kind of hard to navigate like who do i tell and how do i say it and you know what will people think of me when i do advertise and how do i just know what to do in this job and like who do i go to for what so it it was definitely like um overwhelming mm -hmm. but i found just asking questions ask so many questions to people 
And that helps you like understand more about your own job. And if you're asking questions, you're engaging in conversation with people and that opens up opportunities to talk about, you know, more personal things like your stutter. Um, And you also have to remember, like, you don't technically know what people are thinking. Um, Someone may respond in a way that is offensive to you, or they may not say anything, but you can kind of tell by their non-verbal cues that they don't really care that you stutter, or they don't care that you're talking to them. And that's hard, but you have to just remember, like, you don't know exactly what they're talking about. So just continue on with your attitude of you are being yourself. And if people want to accept you, then that's great. And if people don't, that's unfortunate, but you can still try to have like a more positive working relationship with them and just ask questions. Um, Carl, do you want to add on anything? Um, I, yeah, I think I would only say like, it, it is really tough because I think at the core, we all want to be, we all want to be accepted and, and appreciated. And when we feel that people may not give us the respect or they may not understand, it is really tough, you know, to, to kind of get through that. Um, you know, but the thing that I try and do is like, if I'm talking and if someone like cuts me off or if I get like a weird look, I try my best to just say, you know, Hey, if I don't let them know how I feel, then they're going to think that it's okay to respond to me like that and and potentially to, to someone else who has a a different, you know, thing that they're dealing with. So I try and just say, you know, Hey, as you may have noticed, I stutter, um, you know, and, and just kind of like put that back on people, you know, because I, I just, I try and think, you know, the only thing I can control is how I respond to things like I, I I can't control how anyone else thinks or what they do like so I just need to do the best that I can do in terms of just controlling what I can control um yeah I'm guys, sure if we have more time I probably respond more but I know we're a little yeah. bit over yeah, yeah so. we're a little over but Carmen has had her hand raised so let's just take Carmen's question question and let that be the last well, I, sure I'm good. It's, it's not really a question I just wanted to say how um you know, after many years of being out of work and not really talking to people about stuttering, although, although the people that they knew that I did, but I never talked about it and I always tried to hide it. But then once I started to be more comfortable, I, I didn't know how to bring it up. And I discovered a very easy way to do it, which which is... Uh, when people ask you, uh, 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 like, uh, uh, like what you did over the weekend or or the week before, I started to talk about uh, my chapter uh, meetings. So, for example, like. Uh, a couple of days a month, uh, when my chapter meets, I, I couldn't stay long at work. And the reason was because I had to go to my meeting and I told um, uh, my co-workers that I had to go to a meeting for a group of people that stutter. And I didn't have to say anything else. And people immediately knew why I would go there. And they would be like, oh, great. And then uh, sometimes after that, uh, somebody they would ask me about the meetings and what we did and things like that. Or I used when people ask about the plans for the summer. I'm like, well, I'm going to go to this big. Um, uh, 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 meeting you know on the fourth of July. I'm gonna meet all these people. So I actually find that talking about the meetings and the convention is a good way to introduce the topic without you know being uncomfortable about having to say I study. You know you're already saying it, and 
that's a way I, I, I find that I can introduce it to people. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks, thanks, Carmen, for sharing. And thanks, and thanks everyone for attending and being a part of our, our webinar. We shared a lot of content um, and we had a, a lot of really good discussion. So for me, I really appreciate you all for joining. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We appreciate it. All right. And um, we will we'll release the video recording of this webinar and the chat text probably by the end of the week to everyone here and that also registered and couldn't could it, could it make it because I know for sure we want to keep that chat transcript. There was a lot of great stuff there. Yeah. Yes, really indeed. Was. And all thank right. you, Carl yeah. and Ariel. Excellent job. Sure thing. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thanks thank for you. all your support, man, as usual. Thanks, everyone. I, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.